Hey folks, Alan Manick, the Hot Rod Hippie here. In today's video, we're gonna be building a custom fuel tank. So let's get to it. So today I'm coming to you from my dad's shop in Pennsylvania where I'm working on his 1965 GMC 1000 series, you might as well just call it a C10 pickup truck. With that, I'm building this fuel tank to go at the very back of the frame, behind the rear axle, tucked between the frame rails. So we're going to cover a few basic important details when it comes to building your own fuel tank and I'm going to walk you through my process as I'm doing it here. Let's get to the big thing I think we should get to right away and that is why. Why build your own custom fuel tank? So if you're building a Mustang, a Camaro, there's a lot of different cars you could be building where you can buy a tank. And while it may not be a very cheap tank, it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of aggravation and a lot of tools you're going to need to get the job done. That out of the way, why am I building a custom tank? Well, I'm doing it because one, I can, and also because my dad wants somewhat of a specific situation here. He wants to be able to fold down the tailgate and have a storage area underneath the bed floor and above the fuel tank in this truck. So that is probably the number one reason to build your own tank, and that is whatever is available on the market doesn't fit your needs one way or another. So the second reason I could see why you might want to build your own fuel tank is expense. The tank for this truck with the EFI setup for the six liter LS based engine that's in this thing, the whole setup would have been over $600 to pick it up from one of the quality manufacturers that are available out there. For me to build this tank, materials, fuel pump, the fuel sender, all the things that I'm kidding this out with, it's gonna be less than half of that. Now, if you need to pay somebody to either bend up, shear up, weld the parts for you, basically build it for you, that's going to blow the budget right out of the water. That $600 tank is probably going to be pretty darn affordable versus a custom fabricated version. I know personally the amount of money that I would charge to fully custom build this tank, it's going to be more expensive than what Boyd Welding is selling their tank setup for. And the last reason I can see why you might want to build your own fuel tank is nobody makes it. If it's not available for your car, well then it's understandable you're going to need to build your own tank if you're trying to do something custom or you can't even get a reproduction tank for it and your tank's shot. I'm going ahead and I'm making my own tank here, so let's get into the nitty gritty of actually building this tank. So first and foremost, we need to consider where the fuel tank is going to fit and what dimensions it needs to fit within. In this case, the tank is going to be here between the frame rails, behind the rear axle and behind the step notch for the air ride suspension. The dimensions that I have to work with from this cross member to this cross member that I put in are 21 inches deep at the tightest point right around 27 inches wide and I've already figured out that with the truck laid out I don't want to have the tank hanging too far below the frame and I need it to peak just above the frame here so I can get the fuel neck over top of the frame rail pretty easily. So with that I figured out that somewhere around eight and a half inches deep is going to be a pretty good overall dimension for this. So the next thing we need to decide is what material we're going to make this tank out of. With the ethanol in fuel nowadays, aluminum is not necessarily the best choice. However, it is easier to work with than the better alternative that is stainless steel. Bending, grinding, sanding, cutting, pretty much every step of the process is more difficult with stainless steel than it is with aluminum. Stainless steel also requires you back purge your weld. So if you're doing a full tank, well, you're gonna have to back purge the entire tank. That is a lot of argon you're gonna be putting into the tank, so that's a much increased expense on the overall project. With those factors in mind, I'm choosing to work with aluminum. And quite honestly, aluminum will still hold up just fine. Stainless will just hold up better. That's all there is to it. Now, the material that I chose to work with is 3003 aluminum in an 80,000 thickness. That is 0 0.080 of an inch. The reason for the 3003 is it's soft, so it's easy to form and it's also weldable. Also because my local metal supply place only has 3003 in stock, unfortunately. Now I chose 80,000th thickness because I wanted this thing to have a fair amount of structure while not being too darn heavy. Also with say like 16 gauge, I'd probably want to bead roll it or something to put a little more structure into it. I wanted to simplify the project. Now the next consideration is design. The overall design is clearly important. For me, I'm able to fit this into just a rectangular box. So that is great. It's a pretty simple way to go about things. I don't have to get fancy cutting corners and such to fit around a mini tub rear suspension or anything like that. Now, generally the way I would design a tank is to do it as simply as I can. 
make it as easy on myself as I can. As few welds, because the less welds, the less chance you have of leaking, and also just less time involved in the whole process. Even if it takes me a few minutes longer to bend up a complex box, if I save myself a few welds, it's gonna be worth it in the end. The next consideration I have to make is that because this is street driven, I'm gonna need a fuel level sender, I'm gonna need that fuel pump assembly for the EFI, and I'm also gonna need a vent, and I'm gonna need a fill port on this thing. So, first and foremost, since this will be a street-driven vehicle, I wanna put baffles in here to prevent fuel from sloshing side to side as you're driving down the street, taking a corner, or accelerating and decelerating. So I'm gonna break this up into three different sections with these baffles, and I have some bigger cutouts just to allow it to equalize a little easier while we're both filling and one fuel levels get low. So now that I have the three sections marked out on the tank, I'm gonna mark the very middle of the tank because that's where my fuel pickup assembly is gonna be for the fuel pump module. Now, to create my own fuel pump module, rather than buying one of the pre-made ones that are out there on the market, I picked up this clean-out plate setup from the folks at Boyd Welding. It comes with a ring that has nut certs installed into it so you can bolt it in location, a rubber seal gasket, and this plate that's generally intended to be a clean-out cover so you can get into a tank, clean out the debris that might be in there, or just inspect it. I'm going to use this to create my own fuel pump module. In this other section, I'm going to have a fuel level sender. I picked this one up from the folks at Boyd Welding as well. It's a standard five bolt fuel sender ring. Now I am gonna put a vent fitting in this tank. You can use a vented gas cap and I do often like those and they do work well. However, I like to have a separate vent fitting. The idea with that is when you're filling the tank, vapor doesn't build up in the tank as you're filling. So now I have my overall design laid out, so I can go ahead and punch these holes in for both the fuel pump assembly, fuel level sender, and the actual vent port. All right, now I'm set up on the drill press and I'm ready to go ahead and cut my four inch hole for the fuel pump module. I have this nicely clamped down with four clamps all around here. The better you clamp your piece, the less likely you are to break your tooling, ruin your piece, it's just going to be better. I see far, far too many people just holding on to pieces and trying to use a drill press. And without further ado, let's create what I think is probably... Wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? I've got the hole you saw me cut in there. I've got the hole for the fuel level sender in, and I've got the hole as well as the actual fitting for the vent already in. I've got the main structure tacked together, and I've got the baffles welded in. It's been a little bit of a battle, as fuel tanks always are when you're making out of somewhat thinner material. They want to warp, they want to distort from the heat, so it can be a little bit of a pain in that regard. One important thing to note when you're doing a fuel level sender ring is you need to go ahead and index it properly so that your fuel level sender actually swings free. And oh, now if it tries to swing and hits one of the baffles or hits the side of the tank, that is an important thing to note. So you should really mock up the fuel level sender on the ring, see how it swings, mark it, and then install it into the tank. And then I'm ready to start welding on the side panels. So it's a whole lot of welding, and I'm gonna get to it. I got one side panel fully welded on this. I got the main structure welded together. The baffles are welded in, and I added two more baffles to the setup. The two baffles are small ones for forward and back, so on hard acceleration and hard braking, the fuel pump will continue to have good fuel supply. I have the mounting ring for the fuel pump module welded in. I have the fuel level sender ring and the vent fitting all welded in. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off this side and give you a quick rundown of everything that's been involved with this project. So I'm gonna let you know a few little things about important details of building a tank like this, things you're gonna to need to watch out for. Keep everything square. Having a good welding bench like this to clamp everything down to, to keep it flat, really helps out with that warpage I was talking about and just keeping things in the dimensions that you want them to be in. Keep your materials clean. Aluminum needs to be clean for good quality weld and it also has an oxide layer on its surface. So if you strip the very edge where you're welding just a little bit back from the whole thing, it will help your weld at least a little bit. 
I generally like to at least clean the surfaces that I'm going to be welding. If I'm welding in a corner joint, I'll run through there, maybe a little sandpaper or a file to clean that up, get it good and square. Also along with that is fitment. Aluminum does not fill easily. If you have a gap in there, you're gonna be fighting yourself, especially if you're not an exceptionally good TIG welder. Aluminum welds do not penetrate particularly well. A good weld will penetrate, but not like steel does. So you need, say, a good V joint. Make sure your welder is set up properly for whatever material thickness you're running with, and definitely make sure you're using the right filler material for the material you're welding. I'm welding on 3003. 4043 is the proper rod for this situation. I'll put a link down in the description to an Alcoa welding chart. That chart is a little cross-section chart. You pick out what materials you're welding together, whether they be differing materials or the same materials, and it'll give you a really good breakdown of what filler rod choice you should make. I use that all the time. It is an extremely handy tool for a welder or fabricator. I'm gonna go ahead and weld on that final side panel, and then I'm gonna make the fuel pump module, and I'll show you all that at the end of this video. So let's get to it. And just like that, the tank is welded. So obviously it was a lot of welding on this tank, more than I wish there had been, but it went pretty smoothly once I got rolling with it. A good note here, you should always leak test things, especially before you paint them, powder coat them, or final assembly. Once you're done, go ahead and pressure test that vessel, leak test it. Pressure testing, if you are going to do pressure testing, should be low pressure. Do not put your shop air to this tank. The big flat areas of this thing, it's gonna expand out, it's gonna turn into a balloon. Believe me, I've seen it happen before. You may have noticed in the video I was actually using my Hourglass Ingenuity hand rest when I was welding this thing up. It made my life a lot easier welding this all together. You can check out a video I did about that tool right here. So now I've got this thing fully assembled. I built the fuel pump module. When I built the fuel pump module, I actually used an AC Delco EP381 fuel pump, which is a replacement pump for a 96-97 Chevy pickup truck. That's a good pump because it pushes enough pressure and enough flow rate for this engine to not starve, to feed it properly, and it's a pretty affordable pump. I'll put a link down in the description. You can pick one up if you're doing an LS swap and you're not looking to make a ton of power, just around the original horsepower numbers, it's a really good replacement pump for this application. On that fuel pump module, what I did is I took three pieces of 3 8 tube and I welded them to the backside of the fittings for both the pressure and the return line, and then I welded the third one off to the side that I used to clamp the fuel pump. Too. That put the fuel pump at the right depth with that fuel sock picking up right at the bottom of the tank in that nice little baffled area so this thing did not go to stall. I did extend the return line mostly down to the bottom of the tank as well. I don't really like to just dump right at the top of the tank because then it has a chance to aerate the fuel once the tank gets a little bit lower. I try to avoid that personally and try to get the fuel return down lower in the tank. Overall, building your own fuel tank can be a challenge. Like I said, warpage is an issue. The design is an issue. If you're not a very good TIG welder, if you don't TIG weld at all, well, that could be a real problem. This is not something I would say should be your first TIG welding experience. You need to practice, you need to work on it before you go doing something like a vessel that's gonna be holding a flammable liquid. That is important. This can be a safety hazard, especially if you develop leaks, cracks. These are things you need to think about. So I would caution if you're going to go ahead and build your own fuel tank, if you've never done it before, put some serious thought into whether or not you're up to it, practice before you do attempt it, or maybe find somebody else who is already capable and has experience doing it for you. Everybody does start somewhere, so it's up to you whether or not you're ready to undertake this project. I hope you found this video informative, folks. If you did, go ahead and drop it a like. Let me know in the comments down below. Is there anything I didn't really discuss that you would have liked to see me discuss in this topic? Do you want to build your own fuel tank? Do you have some custom project that'd be really neat to get a, a nice custom fuel tank in? Let me know in the comments down below. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more content like this every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.